allow me to introduce you to a feminist engineering icon, Caroline Haslett. Here she is. Now, uh, back in 1925, when electricity was still kind of quite a new thing, really, she was this young, inspired electrical engineer. She managed to buy herself a swanky new flat in Marlebone. And um, she decided that she was going to install the electricity herself. This was not the go-to pastime of your average 1920s gal about town. But Caroline was anything but average. She strongly believed that the newfangled electrical appliances of the day could transform women's lives by freeing them from the horror of household chores. Thing is, around this time, people were pretty confused about electricity, and understandably so, because some plugs would have, would have three pins, others would have two. This one here, I think, is made of wood. Seems like a slight dangerous idea. And, I mean, look at the absolute monstrosities that were available. I'm not sure how you're supposed to comfort yourself nice and warm while you're sat next to a plug socket in the wall. But Caroline, she wanted to change all this, so she set up the Electrical Association for Women with the amazing slogan, Emancipation from Drudgery. And then she spent two decades encouraging women to get on board with the electrical revolution. Which brings us to the aftermath of World War II. The mammoth job of rebuilding Britain offered a golden opportunity to redesign our dodgy electrical system. So the government formed a committee of mechanical engineers and appointed Caroline as the safety expert. And, you guessed it, the sole woman. So they spent an entire month plugging away uh, and came up with this thing here. The so-called Electrical Installations Post-War Building Studies Number 11. Very catchy. Within its many pages was something Caroline had really pushed for, a safer, universal plug. Now, before this point, every single electrical item had to be separately wired into a fuse in the wall. But by putting the fuse inside the plug, it meant that if anything dodgy, like a extremely terrifying electric hot water bottle. If anything dodgy failed, then it would be the plug that would bear the brunt of it rather than blowing the electrics in your whole house. In 1947, the now iconic three-pin model became the standard British plug. And the same year, Caroline was made a dame for her electrifying work. The humble British plug, specifically the BS 1363. Now, uh, doesn't get a lot of attention, this guy, but over the next three minutes, I hope to persuade you that this is a genuine genius invention. To get to grips with the UK plug's unique engineering, let's get inside. Well, you've got a fuse there, you've got two wires, live and neutral, that are essentially closing the circuit so that electricity will flow into and out of your electrical device. I have an esteemed friend and colleague who says, uh, the live is brown, because that's the colour your pants will be if you accidentally touch it. <laughs> but the clever bit is this third wire up the top, the green and the yellow one. This is your earth wire. This is the wire that allows the electricity an easy way to escape should anything ever go wrong. So you don't get electrocuted. And the plug has been designed to put that earth wire front and centre. I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but the, the top pin, the special third pin, this pin is ever so slightly longer than the others. That long earth prong goes into the wall first. So that your plug is earthed before it ever becomes live. And abracadabra opens up a magic plug portal. You see, the entrances to the live and the neutral points are protected by these little gates. So even if you sort of try and poke a pencil in there, you're not going to be able to get to them. This gate gets in the way. And that gate is only opened when the top pin pushes through. And then just a little spring allows that gate to open. Do you see that? Very, very clever. Extremely clever idea. And thus ends my shameless plug for the British plug. <laughs>